I was sharing about this yesterday with one of my clients. Reminds me of my friend Kent McElhatton at Industrial Scientific who told me years ago, uh, he said, you know, John, I don't worry about our competitors stealing our technology. They do. He said, what they can't have is the hearts and the minds, the sense of worthiness our people bring to work every day. And, and Kent then went on to say, if I had to choose between a technology competitive advantage and a people competitive advantage, that'd be easy. I'd choose people every time. Hi, my name's John Stallworth, and I'm on a mission to encourage and strengthen men and women around the world who are committed to become as impactful and as effective as they possibly can at making the world better through their leadership. Last week when Melanica and I were in Indianapolis, I talked about a trap that many leaders get into in which they end up feeling terribly overextended. I used the phrase fried, but paradoxically, tragically underutilized. And I used the phrase wasted. And what I would like to do today is two things, briefly. One, I want to widen the scope of that reflection to talk about the fact that this trap of being deployed in the world but not being properly utilized is in fact a broad human condition that we all share, not just those in leadership. And then I want to show you a brief video that I uh, filmed a couple of years ago on one of my trips to Singapore in which I dug down into that issue and how it impacts the way we think about our leadership and management practice. First of all, let me show you the video that I filmed in Singapore. I am uh, two weeks into this visit to Singapore. Got one week to go. And I've talked about this before, but I want you to see the city that's behind me. I'll give you a bit of a look at it in just a minute. Uh, it's a very interesting parable, Singapore is, because it shows the power of serving. Uh, we think that wealth, we think that value comes from things like uh, raw resources or superior intellect or maybe a breakthrough, you know, that somebody makes. And it's true that there are early advantages to, you know, the smart and the beautiful the handsome, the tall, the strong, the lucky. But sustained value creation and actually enduring wealth is a product of serving well. When this country was founded, Lee Kuan Yew, the founding leader, uh, knew that they had barely a chance to make it. Uh, they were a mud flat. No resources in the ground, no natural born advantages at all. Poor and bereft and cut off and threatened. And he set himself and his nation to the disciplined task of not asking what's owed to me and you know, who did us wrong and what are our threats, but rather what, what can we do excellently to be of use to others. And everything that you see behind me, all the wealth of this nation, all the capability of Singapore is a product of serving excellently. They ask themselves, how can we do it better than others? How can we help people who want to get things done to use us to help get them done. And little by little, this country rose uh, over the years through high integrity, clear abiding by principles. In other words, when they promise to do something, they do it the way they promise to do it. And a heart of service. That's where the wealth of Singapore comes from. Uh, it isn't in natural born advantage. It isn't in superior intellect or some kind of luck of the draw. It's in their belief that their people are the difference makers. And it reminds me, I was sharing about this yesterday with one of my clients, it reminds me of my friend Kent McElhatton at Industrial Scientific who told me years ago, uh, he said, you know, John, I don't worry about our competitors stealing our technology, they do. He said, what they can't have is the hearts and the minds, the sense of worthiness our people bring to work every day. And, and Kent then went on to say, if I had to choose between a technology competitive advantage and a people competitive advantage, that'd be easy. I'd choose people every time. Friends, you're looking at a city that was built on that philosophy. Let's build our people, let's grow our people, let's treasure our people, let's invest in our people, 
let's set standards that expect people to do their best. Let's not wait for someone else to do something that makes it possible for us. Let's serve. Let's make a difference. Let's help someone else. And this is uh, the root of all value creation in the world. When Kent McElhatton founded Industrial Scientific, he had a decision to make. And he tells the story of a conversation he had with his wife, Martha, uh, in those early days in which he said something along these lines. You know, I, uh, I know that the purpose of business is to make money, and that's important, but it isn't really the heart of what interests me. He said, I'm interested in investing in people. And that's where I want to put my focus, is giving people what they need and providing them the resources they need and the tools they need and selecting really great people and staying out of their way enough that they can really perform and really calling them to a great purpose that is worth them giving their lives to. And the way in which Industrial Scientific grew from maybe one of the last place contenders in the gas detection manufacturing industry to one of the leading manufacturers in that industry on earth was driven by that decision to invest in people. I think that it points us to what I have concluded is one of the most important decisions that we leaders need to make. And that decision is this, how are we going to view our people? What is the point of view we are going to hold toward the value of our people? I think this is one of the most important decisions we make. Do we see them as second tier contributors to our success, we being in the first tier, bringing you know, what we know and then hiring others to join us? Or do we see them as the extraordinary resource that they actually are? If we do not view our people as an extraordinary resource, as a treasure, we relate to them differently, we invest in them differently, uh, we equip them and empower them differently, and it shows up in our performance. I think it is very important for us in leadership to ask the question, how are we going to see, view, and treat our people? Well, I will be working on this again next week and over the months ahead, showing you tools and giving you access to some resources that have been really impactful in businesses around the world for leaders who really do understand the treasure that is the human person who comes to work with them, but are looking for more effective ways to unlock that. And so um, until next week, I just want to thank you again for being part of this community that we are building. And would you do me the great favor of subscribing to this channel? Would you consider also sharing these videos as I post them with your friends in leadership and invite them to be part of this serving leader community? And until next week, be encouraged in what you do. You have such an extraordinary impact on the lives of the men and the women who come to work with you every day. You shape an immense dimension of their lived experience because of how significant a work week is for each of us. And you have the capacity to tap, to unlock, to unleash the incredible, I wanna say nearly infinite potential of the men and women who join you every day to fulfill your mission in the world.